Hello friends, welcome back to Easy to Learn Tech and thank you for watching all my previous video. If you like my video, please like, share and subscribe to my channel. And if you are watching my video first time, please subscribe and press the bell icon that you will get all the latest video notification and for air conditioning and VRF. And for the list 1 of troubleshooting and list 2, already I have provided a link in the description. You can go over there and check the link and you can solve the issue of your air conditioning. Without wasting our time, let's start our video and see all these error code and their solution. Let's see the first error. E554 or your LED 1 and LED 2 will be on and LED 3 will be off. It means gas leakage. To solve this issue, you have 4 steps to do. First of all, you check the position of your indoor UV operator in sensor if it is normal or not. If it is not placed in normal place, place it in the normal place and start the unit. And if your unit start, it means there was an issue of in sensor of our UV operator. And if it doesn't start, again it's showing the error for the gas leakage. Then you have to check the EVV wall operation. Put the power on again and see the sound of your EVV wall. If there is no sound, it means your EVV wall is faulty. Then you have to replace your EVV wall. And next, if after seeing the sound of EV wall, EVV wall sound is normal, then you have to check the pressure of your refrigerant. If you see the refrigerant pressure is not normal, then you have to find out the leakage and you have to solve the leakage and you have to charge the refrigerant and your unit will be working. And if your pressure is ok, then you have to exchange your indoor PCB and again you have to put the power on and if it start, it means uh, indoor PCB was faulty. Again if it doesn't start, then again it's showing the same error, then you have to change the outdoor PCB and your unit will be in working condition. Let's see our next error, E464. When your LED 3 will be blinking and LED 1 and LED 2 will be off, it means IPM over current, OC current error. First of all, for to solve this issue, you have to check the connection of your compressor wire is normal or not. If it's not normal, then connect it normal and again you have to start. And if you see again the error is occurring, then you have to go for the next step. If the error is not occurring, then it means there was a misconnection of your connection of your compressor wire. If, if the error is occurring again, then you have to go check the condition of indoor and outdoor temperature. If the temperature is not normal, then you have to go for the next step. Then you have to see the position of your temperature sensor and sensing value is normal or not. If it is not normal, then you have to change your sensor and your unit will be working. And if the placement and the temperature sensor value is normal, it means then you have to check the compressor body and interface resistance. And when you check this and your compressor is also ok, it means your compressor is not faulty, then you have to change the outdoor PCB. If you find the compressor is body or interface resistant is insulated, then you have to change the compressor and your unit will be in working condition. Let's see the next error code E465. When our LED 1 is blinking and LED 2 is on and LED 3 is off, it means compression will emit error. To solve this issue, you have to follow the step for the error E464 which I have explained previously and your unit will be in working condition. Let's talk about next error code E466, E483, E484. These three error codes are the same. When your LED 1 will be off, LED 2 will be on and LED 3 will be blinking. At that time, this 3 error code will be similar to one blinking error. This error can be a DC link voltage under or over error or PFC overload error or over voltage protection error. To solve this troubleshooting, you have to follow the 6th step. First of all, you have to check the connection of your reactor if it is connected properly or not. If it is not connected, connect the wire properly for the reactor and start the unit. And again, if you are getting the same problem, then you have to check the voltage is normal or not. The normal range should be 180 volt AC to 270 volt AC. If the voltage is not normal, then check the input power in the power code. And if the voltage is normal, then you have to restart your unit in operation mode in cooling or heating. When you start your unit, then you have to check the DC link voltage. A is normal in operation mode. The range should be 280 volt DC, 320 volt DC. If the power is not normal, then check the input power. And if your power is normal, then you have to follow the next process. In the next process, you have to check the DC link sensing voltage D is normal in operation mode or not. 
the normal range should be 0.2 volt DC to 4.0 volt DC. If you are not getting this voltage then you exchange your PCB and if you are getting this voltage then you have to change the reactor because the reactor installation is damaged and exchange the reactor your unit will be in working condition. If you have any issue in doing the troubleshooting please do not hesitate to comment in this video.